Welcome back to Morning Joe, 40 past the hour, and joining us now from New Orleans, director of the Earth Institute at Columbia University, Dr. Jeffrey Sachs, good friend of the show, and director of the National Center for Disaster Preparedness at Columbia University, and president of the Children's Health Fund, Dr. Erwin Redliner. Uh, doctor, very good to see you as well. Uh, thank you for being with us. Good Dr. Morning, Redliner, thanks. I would like to start sort of on a, a, a side issue that actually I think really gives us a big picture of where we stand five years later, and that is the state of the mental health and the status of children of Katrina. Uh, can you characterize where we are five years later and where we should be? Sure, Mika. You know, the thing is that uh, people are falling all over themselves trying to declare Katrina and the recovery from Katrina over. But the fact is that our brand new study is showing that the status of kids five years after the storm is still very, very worrisome. In fact, we found that uh, at least 20 to 30,000 children now, right now, in the Gulf, just between Mississippi and Louisiana, are suffering from significant long-term uh, emotional disorders, and many, in, many in, in situations of severe housing instability as well. So it's a long way to go for these children. And, uh, and certainly, I think, we all could do better by them. Dr. Sachs, as we look at energy policy, I know this is something that you look at across the board closely, and uh, what's happening to the economy in that area, especially given the Gulf disaster there with the oil spill. Um, where do we go from here in trying to develop sustainable policy? And have we lost some time in the past maybe year or two in terms of new ideas? Isn't it amazing that uh, we've had the spill, we've had these disasters, we've had the uh, hottest uh, summer, uh, actually hottest year in recorded history, and we've also had the complete collapse uh, of uh, any attempt in our country at an energy policy. Uh, the administration withdrew the legislation. Senator Reid said we won't consider it. Basically, we're, we're totally adrift. Uh, and this is what's really shocking. We've been waiting, I've been waiting uh, for the administration to put forward a plan so that at least the American people would have some guidelines. We never have gotten that plan. And without it, we're just going to have uh, a, one disaster after another, basically, and, until we start thinking about the future, whether it's uh, in energy, whether it's uh, in uh, the climate hazards. We're, we're kind of in denial and in drift right now. And you all are part it's, of the it's major. Amazing. It, it truly is. You all are part of the major conference down there. Tell us about that. And, and quite frankly, is anything going to come out of it? Well, you know, one, one thing that's interesting, uh, Irwin and I and, uh, and uh, Mitch Landrew, the, the great mayor of uh, the city of uh, New Orleans, we were talking last year about exactly this drift and the fact that uh, this was before the spill, uh, that something needed to be done to help mobilize public understanding about what the challenges are and get some forward-looking action. So we called uh, this conference uh, Fighting for Survival in, in the Gulf region. And okay. then all over the Caribbean, uh, the leaders, uh, not only from the Gulf states, uh, from the cities of the region, from the universities, but uh, prime ministers uh, from the Caribbean nations, uh, representatives from Mexico, Guatemala, and, and so forth, all have come here. We're brainstorming today. What's, what's weird is that you can't find a more vulnerable part of our country and indeed uh, in the world, but there's been a lot of denial in this region as well. So we're waiting to see in, in the discussion we have today whether we can uh, help to mobilize some forward-looking action. And Dr. Radliner. Both, uh, uh, both Jeff. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, both Jeffrey and I are very, very action-oriented, and we think really the time has come, and this is the best place for it really to begin. We have to elevate this whole conversation and, and understand our, our concerns are, are not academic. They're actually real. And to come to an area like this, in a region which is so extremely vulnerable, to us is the perfect place to say, what is the action? Who's going to organize this? Who is responsible? How much resources will we put into slowing down what is obviously a collision course? course uh, with the well-being of lots of people, millions of people around the world, and particularly in a region like this one. And Pat Buchanan, as we take the conversation a step further, and I know Dr. Redliner is, uh, is knee-deep in this, but we did the show at the school in New Orleans a while back, and right. there were kids, this amazing group of kids, this amazing school, but there were kids right. whose families still live in Houston, yep. where people were moved uh, during the disaster. I mean, these these 
lives have not even come close to being put back together. Well, that's, that leads to the question I'd like to ask both gentlemen is, we've had uh, New Orleans five years ago, that disaster, enormous national attention focused on it, and enormous amounts of resources went down there, and then we have things, you get the spill in the Gulf, you get the disaster in Haiti, which is horrendous, hundreds of thousands of dead, we're looking at the floods in Pakistan. How do you get the focus back on New Orleans after scores of billions of dollars have been spent there, and the attention, if you will, the camera moves on and moves elsewhere. Well, not, not only does the attention move elsewhere, but, but what happens is that the people who have been left behind after the disaster, after the attention has dissipated, uh, end up suffering greatly. We don't even, we're not even seeing this. And one of the reasons we wanted to issue this uh, five-year report is basically to say, you gotta get your eyes back on this place because we have serious problems here. I was speaking with the, the, uh, the Minister for the Environment of Haiti uh, yesterday. He was telling me that it is absolutely horrendous how little progress mm -hmm. has been made. And one of the problems, Pat, is that we, we really don't learn the lessons from the, the last disaster and apply them to policies and the way we organize response to and prevention of disasters that are coming up. And this inability to learn from our mistakes and our missteps is really harming us and our ability to help people. All right. We look forward to hearing what comes out of the conference. Uh, Jeffrey Sachs, always good to see you. And Dr. Erwin Redliner, thank you as well.